Today we are talking about my top 10 trail upgrades for your Honda Pioneer. I know this isn't the typical content that you see on this channel. Traditionally, we are a firearms channel. However, one of the tools that I use to help make content is my side-by-side. -side. It gets me to and from the range. I use it at classes, matches, whatever it might be. So it has been a very, very valuable tool for me to make content. However, one of the other things that I really liked about it was learning all about side-by-sides and UTVs and four-wheeling type stuff along the way, so I thought I would share that. Now, if you haven't checked out my other videos on my UTV, check out the playlist. It's gonna be up in a card there if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, you can head over to the webpage and just search for UTV. But today, we're talking about my top 10 trail upgrades for your Honda Pioneer. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for checking in and spending a few minutes of your day checking out this video. Again, check us out online, follow us on social media. Now, we just got back from a trip in South Dakota and the trail riding was absolutely amazing. And the Honda Pioneer performed really, really well. Now I know the Honda is more of a utility machine. It's not so much of a trail and sporty machine, but with some upgrades, everything came together really nicely and we had a really, really enjoyable trail riding experience. I could not say enough good things overall about the Pioneer. Now I'm not gonna be talking about like major component upgrades like shocks and things like that. That might be a future video because I did upgrade the shocks, but truth be told, I don't have a ton of experience with them yet except for this one ride. I definitely wanna get some more experience before I make a video about the Elka Stage 4 shocks that I did upgrade to, but so far they are pretty nice. Before we get right to it, I do wanna say that with the exception of number one, all of this stuff is in no particular order, okay? It doesn't mean that I say you should have one versus the other right away or anything like that. It's just literally how the list came out as I was typing. And in fact, there was more like 12 to 14 things that I was really excited about. So yeah, there might be some more content as well. And we've already done several videos as far as how I've customized the UTV, why I picked the UTV. Again, check that playlist out. But before we get into the top 10, I do want to talk about safety equipment because that is like a must have. In my opinion, every side-by-side -side or every machine, you should be carrying basic first aid gear as well as a fire extinguisher and some other kind of safety essentials such as shelter care. Could you, you know, basically take care of yourself if you broke down or had some sort of an injury? So while those things won't be on the list, I do carry a fire extinguisher. I do carry first aid and trauma equipment. Now I used to be an EMT D minus, which means I was a really bad EMT. So I have a little bit more training than the average person. So I do carry some stuff that's a little more trauma focused versus like boo-boo focused. But those things should be an absolute must that you carry with you as well. That being said, number one, in my opinion, is one of the most important, and that is the tie downs from Max Tie Downs. These wheel nets are absolutely awesome. Now, the reason why I am putting these number one on the list is because you do need to make sure that you get your machine to and from the trail safely, and these tie downs are absolutely the best way to do it. Now, I was doing all sorts of research on tie downs, and I, in fact, I bought a heavy duty set of tie downs to do the traditional four corners method or even the cross method that you hear about. And truth be told, every time that I would be trail riding and then uh, you know, stop on the journey when I'm towing it in my trailer, things would shift. The suspension you know, would cause a little bit of uh, shift in the straps or whatever. And then I came across these wheel nets from Max. These go over the wheel like so, and then they attach the tie down points in your trailer as I'm showing you. Now, what I like about them is that they secure each of the wheels. So you still have four corners of the machine. However, it doesn't matter if the suspension gives or the body, you know, tilts or sways or anything like that because all of the wheels are locked basically to the trailer, creating an absolute rock solid securing method to get your machine from your house to the trail or to a race or whatever it might be. These things are by far the absolute best. And when we went out to South Dakota, trailered this thing for thousand, over a thousand miles round trip, every time I would stop to check, the machine was solid. There was no shift, there was no movement or anything like that. These are by far the best way to secure your machine to your trailer. So my number one pick is the Max tie downs. Plus they happen to come in green, which match the machine, but they come in all sorts of other colors too. But as long as you have some eyelets and they sell tie down eyelets and things like that, these are absolute awesome. Highly, highly, highly recommend. 
My number two is going to be my windshield and wiper. And when I first got the windshield, this was an absolute must as I was riding around in cold weather and I needed something to block the wind. This one is from UTV 801. They're out of Utah. It's a USA made windshield. And yes, you can see I do have a crack, but I'm gonna be getting that fixed locally. But what I really like about the windshield is not only is it glass and has the wiper, but it was also very well made. Uh, the aluminum body, everything mounted up really slick. Now what's really cool is it does have these vents here as well. So when I am riding in the summer, I can simply tilt the vent up and I still get a decent amount of airflow to help with dust in the cab, fresh air, just generally climate control stuff. Uh, I know some of the half windshields are really popular with the Pioneer and there's times when it's super hot where I do wish I had a little bit more airflow, but overall I'm very happy. Either way, I would highly recommend getting a windshield. There's all sorts of debris and dust and everything like that on the trails that Definitely having a windshield is super nice. And then when it is starting to rain or you know even lightly mist or whatever, having the wiper was a nice accessory to have. Number three is going to be a winch. And if you're gonna be doing any sort of serious trail riding, the possibility of getting stuck is a possibility. So one of the things that I definitely wanted to add was a winch. Now I added the Viper Elite Wide Winch. This is a 6,000 pound winch. And I was looking at all sorts of different brands and I know people recommended some of the import stuff. And to be honest, this one's even imported as well. But what I liked about this is that the company is based out of Minnesota. So if I ever do have a warranty issue and it does have a decent warranty, I can get parts shipped to me relatively quickly. Additionally, I did like that it is a 6,000 pound winch. And once I started looking at some of the other winches, and realizing I would have to add accessories to get to what I have here, the price actually was pretty decent. I was able to get this through a dealer out of Wisconsin. He gave me a forum member price for being in one of the Honda Pioneer forums, but it comes with synthetic rope. It comes with a wireless remote, which is super handy in case I was outside of the machine needing to do any recovery or anything like that. It also does have a dash mounted toggle switch so I can easily use the machine use the winch inside the machine of course but it was actually fairly well featured and it came with the Fairlead. it came with pretty much everything i needed uh, i did buy a mounting bracket from a different company but they have mounting brackets as well but i would highly recommend having a winch and then with the winch what was cool is that it came with a snatch block it came with the rope protector it came with a lot of accessories to make it a nice all-around package now i also carry toe straps and things like that in my storage compartments which by the way if you're looking for more storage with your honda pioneer check out that video up there about honda pioneer storage mods but a winch is definitely something that you should consider. And I so far have been happy with the Viper Elite. Number four on the list is a phone mount and charger. Now I'm using the Ram mount X grip system and I just mounted it to the aluminum plate that I made for my switch panel here. But what I like about this is you can put your phone right here. And then I did add an accessory plug down here. So I just have a short little cable to keep it charged while I'm on the trail. But when I was on the trail, it was nice to have my map right here. I could easily you know, see where I was going, see what I needed to make routes or anything like that. And it held the phone really solid. Even when I was riding, it didn't have too much of the shake or wobble. And then having a nice short cord here, just made for an overall convenient setup and I could still access all of my switches, shifting, things like that. It just worked out really slick. So I was super happy to have a phone mount right here. Now I thought about maybe having it somewhere a little bit more closer to eye view, but with the way that I have my Pioneer set up, this just worked out really well for me. Number five is going to be a spare tire and a jack. And that is also gonna tie into number six here in just a second. But sure enough, I was out in South Dakota earlier this spring and before we even left the parking lot, I had a flat tire. So I could have swapped out to the spare, but I also recommend carrying some basic tools to either plug or patch a tire depending on your skill. And truth be told, it is not that hard. So I carry a small little air compressor from Harbor Freight, just plugs into the 12 volt so I can quickly inflate a tire if needed. That's when using the plug or patch kit. And then in case I did need to swap to the spare, I do carry a spare tire and a jack. And I got this from uh, Rocky Mountain. And what's nice is that the mount just mounts right up here onto the roll cage. It hides right behind the dust cover. I can still dump the bed if need be, and it really doesn't bother the back passengers, but it's just nice, cheap insurance. Now, if I wasn't riding and I didn't have the rack on and I didn't have the jack, I could easily remove this, leave the bracket in place. But the peace of mind, when our group had a spare tire jack and everything that we were able to, you know, basically need on the side of the road if we had to do a repair, it was just really, really nice peace of mind. And what's also nice is that uh, one of the other guys in my group, he has a Can-Am and we share the same, you know, wheel uh, lug pattern. So we were able to share this spare if needed. Now that ties into number six, which is this awesome rack from 
dirt road fabrications. Now, what I really like about this rack is that it offers a great way to not only extend the bed of my Honda Pioneer, because once I have the back seats up, there's not a whole lot of room back here, so I can now carry a cooler, but I can also carry a spare. You can add the gas can accessories. It just is a really, really nice rack. These two quick pins, and I actually upgraded the kit and I got pins on all four, so that way I could quick, easily store this in my garage if I'm not you know, doing a lot of trail riding, I can easily take it off. But the rack just swings open, and here you can see the cooler rack. So when I do have the tailgate down, the back seat's up, I can fit a good sized cooler, still some trail accessories, snacks, extra clothes or whatever. But I can also then easily access stuff that would be in the cargo area if need be. The bed can still tilt, uh, tilt and dump if I need to keep that on. So this is just an absolute great accessory. Now, the one concern I did have is that would it block the tail lights with the rack in place? So that is you know, something that I thought about and truth be told, uh, when I had people riding behind me, you know, there is cutouts here for the tail lights. They could see the tail lights and the brake lights, no problem. But I still added these little lights here. Now these little lights here are the same that I use for my front turn signals, except for these are just the all red version. And then I wired them in using a, basically a trailer, a four plug trailer harness that when I did the street legal kit, I was able to add all that wiring it at the same time. So these are the wide 180 degree throw lenses. And it just gave me that extra peace of mind. So that way, no matter who someone, you know, where someone was behind me, they could see my turn signals and brake lights. And it was a super easy mod. Speaking of lights, the next accessory upgrade that I'm super happy I did was a street legal mod. Now I went with the kit from Ryko. Uh, initially I was using my Switch Pro to control my turn signals and brake lights and all that other stuff. But what I found was that I wanted more outputs on the Switch Pro and I didn't want to necessarily keep a couple of them dedicated to just turn signals. By the way, if you haven't checked out my review of the Switch Pro, make sure you check that out up in the card. Absolutely amazing power control module and management system. It controls all of the outputs. It does an amazing job. By far the most sophisticated and expensive piece on the whole machine, but absolutely love it. So check out that. But back to the street legal kit. I ended up switching over to the Ryko kit mainly because it had a traditional stock. So I can do turn signals. It came with a horn <laughs> and it also has hazard lights that ties in. Now for the front turn signals, I used my existing amber emergency lights that I got off Amazon. I like those better than the kit lights, those little round ones that came with it. But then what I liked about the rear is that it tied into the factory brake and tail lights. So it has a nice streamlined, you know, factory look. Now, one of the things that I didn't like about the Ryko kit was the dummy lights. They give you these two little green LEDs and it tells you to route them from the back. And the only way that you're able to really do that is to take the dash completely apart, which just was not practical. I ended up breaking one of the little leads, tried soldering and it didn't work. It was just kind of a frustrating experience to use these little grommets. So what I ended up doing was I ordered these indicator lights off Amazon. And again, all this stuff, there'll be links. And then I used these bumpers to kind of make a factory looking post. And I have to say with the bumpers and the dummy lights, everything does look really, really good in factory. I was really happy with how the turn signal light and the dummy lights came out again. I lined everything up so it would look good. You know me, I do like it to look factory and I am super impressed with how it came out. Now, when we went to South Dakota, what was cool is that if you're street legal, you can ride right on the roads and some of the highways can't do interstates, but it was absolutely gorgeous riding and I would highly recommend doing a street legal kit. Uh, definitely do not regret that at all. Hopefully Minnesota comes on board, but other states are, and the street legal kit is an absolute, absolute worthwhile upgrade. And by the way, if you haven't gone to South Dakota, you need to, it is gorgeous. The, oops. <laughs> Speaking of street legal, you're going to need mirrors. And I went with the seismic kit. Now I did do videos on these. You can check out the card up there for my review on the seismic mirrors. I did the halo rear and the lighted side mirrors. And these things are absolutely awesome for keeping track of people in your party behind you, uh, other traffic on the road. And plus it is part of that street legal kit. I absolutely cannot recommend these seismic mirrors enough. Uh, they just have been working absolutely awesome for me. I love the, the uh, halo has the lights. I love the side mirrors. They have a nice wide field of view, plus the night LED lights. They have a white and a green light, perfect for either rock or just quick navigation. But I was super, super impressed with the mirrors. Cannot recommend getting good quality mirrors enough. If you know anybody who has a Honda Pioneer 1005 that uses the back seats, then this upgrade is like literally a must have. And I could not believe how much comfort this added. Now, one of the cool things 
with the Honda Pioneer is it does have the back seat, kind of this stow and go style seat. Although I think that's probably a trademark. I'm probably not supposed to say that. But anyways, this folds down and then there's usually a bottom seat cushion right here. And you kind of sit with your butt really, really low to the floor. And it is not the most comfortable, especially for full size people. Well, enter the Rad Custom Bracket. Now what he sells is just this bracket. You are responsible for sourcing the seat bottom yourself. Now, Honda owners, calm down. These are from a Polaris, I know, I know. But I got them on eBay, I got two seat bottoms for the Polaris, and then they basically just bolted right to the bracket. Now, as you can see, I painted the bottom of the seat fluorescent because it does have a P and a D, passenger and driver, so you know which side to go it on. But anyways, I did paint that so it'd be a little easier to see in like low light situations or whatever. But this then just snaps in. Once the bracket is in place, now the comfort is so much better. My angle for my legs is much better. The leg room is much better. I have more airflow. I can actually see above the front passenger. It's almost like stadium seating. This was an excellent upgrade. And anybody that rode in the back, the kids or the adults, they much preferred these. And that's obvious. But what was also cool is that they preferred my back seat to some of the other machines' back seats because this gave you a little bit more comfort. I was really, really impressed. Now, I did add some cup holders. I can't remember where I got them. It was on one of the groups. But the cup holders back here with the seat bracket, this just made for a much more enjoyable experience. These Rad Custom brackets are well worth the money especially if you're hauling full-size passengers in the back. Last, but certainly not least, is the Throttle Max gas pedal. This thing is by far worth its weight in gold. Now, I know there are some guys out there who like to do a homemade version or whatever, but I, I value time, I value ingenuity. Uh, this is by far one of the most enjoyable upgrades. Number one, I get to use it literally every time I go riding, but number two, the comfort. Having your foot kind of up here all the time got really uncomfortable especially on long rides it was just something to do with like your your calf and ankle angle that was just really uncomfortable now when i use this i can basically instead of having to have my foot here i can have it resting way back here and i have a lot more feather and control of the gas pedal when i'm riding especially when i was riding on some technical trails this was super nice to have or when we were even cruising on roads basically just being able to rest my foot and almost kind of have like a cruise control it was just super excellent love this pedal and when i don't want to use it i just flip it up and now i can use it as a traditional gas pedal when i want to use it i just flip it down but installation was super slick this is highly worth the money. By far, this is one of my favorite accessories. I wish I would have got this right away. I heard people rave about them. I know people, again, you know, do the homemade versions and stuff, but this thing is absolutely amazing. I can't recommend this thing enough. Just go out, if you have a Honda Pioneer, this needs to be one of your first upgrades. Just bill it right away and put it in. You will not regret it. So those are my top 10 trail must-haves for your Honda Pioneer 1000. Again, I absolutely love this machine. I have been super pleased with it. It has served our family well. It has served making videos, getting to and from the range, doing chores. I still am very, very, very happy with the machine and the trail accessories just make it that much more enjoyable. What are your favorite accessories? What have you done to your Honda Pioneer or any side-by-side -side for that matter? What things have you found to be absolutely valuable or even just nice to have on the trail? Comment down below. I'd love to hear from you as well. For full information, make sure you check out the description below for links. There'll be a link to our webpage with an article that has all of the stuff we talked about, plus the other videos, the playlist, all the other parts and stuff that were used to make my Pioneer what it is you see in front of you now. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.